We're happy to have back here on the program a man who knows all about March Madness and the sport of basketball, to say the least. Two-time NCAA champion, 13-year NBA veteran, courtesy of DraftKings, Christian Leitner back here on the program. How are you, Christian? What's going on? Hey, Rich. Rich, how you doing? I'm good. Good to see you. Once a year, I get to see you. That's right. Just look at us. I'm happy to have you on more often, Christian. (laughs) Whenever you want. Come on now. I'm happy to have you. Is March it, Madness is fine. It is okay. <laughs> Very good. Is that your artwork behind you on your on your wall? What is that? What do we got here? That is my kids, and not definitely not mine, but my daughter. One, my one daughter is a very good artist, so it might be some of her stuff. Okay, very good. Uh, well, it is good. It's good to see you. What memories come back to you on a week like this one, Christian? Well, I'm 54 now, Rich, so the memories are fading, that's for sure. But, uh, you know, when I think about it, it's all about, you know, that I stayed there for four years and, like, we had so much senior leadership and we had some upperclassmen. And nowadays, when you watch college basketball, there's just so many young kids and they transfer, they move, they change schools and, it just seems like the schools that are doing the best are the are the schools that they have some senior leadership, they have some older kids. Look at what NC State did in the ACC tournament this past weekend. Look what UConn's doing because they got some seniors, they got some kids that stay around. So nowadays when I think of, you know, what we did at Duke, it was about man, we all stayed together and we learned under Coach K's system and we got three or four years under under our belt of running the same system and it just seemed to help and seemed to make our, our basketball very, very high quality. Well, it's funny. We're the same age, Christian. I'm a Michigan guy and I wish my memories would fade. You know what I mean? Like, uh, <laughs> we're the same age. Uh, I, I rem- I, I, I'd, I'd like to not remember what I remember. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Christian. Well, the last fi- the last fifteen years, or are you talking about? No, no, about no, back no, here, no, no, no. You you know what I'm talking about. You're <laughs> you're a smart man. You went to Duke. You know exactly what I'm referring to. You know what I mean? Like I wish I would forget that. <laughs> you you want to forget about '92, the championship game? Yes, that's the one in particular. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you remember well, about that, 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 Christian? That that's just another example of they were all freshmen. And it makes such a huge difference to have, you know, juniors and seniors on your team. So uh, that was a big reason why we won. We played them two times that year. And, uh, you know, we beat them one time in Michigan in December. And then, you know, the second time in the championship game. And they were so good, even though they were only freshmen. And I'm saying the only reason we won is because we had some seniors and juniors on that team. I got Christian Leitner here on the Rich Eisen show. Uh, what uh, what's your favorite Coach K speech that he gave you, Christian? Well, there's too many to uh, to recall and to tell you the stories about right now. But my favorite Coach K times were when he barged into the locker room. He slammed the door behind him and he kicked everyone out of the locker room, all the managers, any other of uh, the supporting staff. And he, he said coaches and players only. And then he would just lay into us and drill into us about how he's going to demand for us to play a certain way. And whenever we had those type of closed door locker room meetings with him yelling at us, I always loved it because I knew we were going to play basketball great for like the next four or five games. (laughs) And then he might need to do it again, like a month later. But whenever he did that, it seemed like we played our best basketball. What was he like in that huddle in the uh, 92 East regional final against Kentucky? drawing up that did he draw up the play for you what was that moment like for the famed shot christian he was he was so composed and he was so positive and he was so trying to get us to believe and to buy in and if you remember i made a shot that sent us to the final four two years prior to that against uconn so 
I thought everyone was on board. I thought Bobby and Grant Hill and everyone on the team were, were all thinking to themselves, you know, we've been here before we got lucky. We made a shot and, and we've done it in the past, but over the last 30 years, Rich, I've learned through the, you know, 30 for 30, I hate Christian Leitner show that, <laughs> that Grant Hill and Bobby Hurley were maybe thinking like our season is over, <laughs> which I can't believe. <laughs> um, but coach K was so positive and so composed. And he said, we can do this. And he said, Grant, can you make a pass? And Christian, can you catch the ball? So he was brilliant in those minutes and during our time out of the Kentucky game. Did you think the inbounds pass was going to be defended? Did you have that conversation? Uh, I don't remember that. I just remember Coach K asking Grant, can you make the pass? And right. Grant said yes. And then Coach K turned to me and said, Christian, can you can you make the catch? And I said, of course, Coach, if he throws a good pass. Um, you're hoping that they don't defend the pass. You know, they don't put someone on the ball. And then you're hoping that you can just get the ball in your hands. Uh, whenever I, you know, think back on that play, I think of Ocho Cinco's book, you know, the football player where he wrote a book. It said, just get the ball in my hands. And that's what I was thinking before that play. Like, I just got to catch the ball and get it in my hands and, and see what happens after that. Christian Leitner here on the Rich Eisen Show. I, I, I don't know uh, if you met the whole Hurley family when you went to college together, but do you remember meeting Dan, who's now sitting astride the college basketball world right now as the coach of the defending champion UConn Huskies who are coming in as the number one overall seed to repeat again? Christian? <laughs> Yes, and I, I did meet Danny Hurley for sure, and it didn't go really well the first time. Why? <laughs> what happened, Christian? Well, I think Bobby was – I don't know if Bobby was a freshman or a sophomore, but Danny came to visit him. I don't know if it was an official visit, like in terms of basketball, for Danny to come to school at Duke. But I think he just visited his older brother and – um it was my sophomore year or my junior year and Danny came down for the weekend and he just had way, way too much bravado and way too much swagger. And I might've put him in his place a little bit. And um, <laughs> what do you mean? Come on now. What happened? What happened? Well, you know, I think, I think Bobby brought him to like our team dinner after practice one night. It might've been like a, a Friday night, we had practice, and then right after practice, we went to dinner over at our team dinner facility, and uh, when Danny walked in, I just teased him, and he didn't pick up my sarcasm, and I said <laughs> something to Danny, like, you're not welcome here, <laughs> and uh, it didn't go over real well, but I was just teasing him. <laughs> Wow. So did he come at you? Did you go chest to chest or something? Or, or, or I guess nose to chest, <laughs> Christian? He might have walked up to me and I just said, I'm just teasing you. And he didn't believe me. And and then he went and told Bobby. And uh -oh. Bobby came Bobby came out in the hallway and was like, stop being a jerk. And so, <laughs> but, you know, I'm impressed with the job Danny Hurley does. Honest, honestly, the thing mm -hmm. I'm impressed with the most is that he gets some of his kids to stay at UConn. He has some junior, senior leadership. And, man, that, that Hurley family, starting with Bobby Sr., they're very, very good coaches, very good basketball family. I, I, I'm, I'm mandated to ask you, since you've made a few references now to you know staying and things of that nature, and there's now name, image, and likeness. Do you have a figure, do you think, of what you could have made if name, image, and likeness was available to you as a Duke Blue Devil back in the day, Christian? No, I, I try not to think about it. Um, you know, people bring it up to me all the time. But but honestly, I don't like it for the game. Um, it makes people move around too much. You know, you you hear what, the, what Saban for the Alabama football team, you hear what he says, you hear what – 
you know, the UConn women's coach Gino says, and it's just, it just hurts the game. And the players are more interested in how much money they can make now and how much the coaches are going to pay them and all this other stuff. And it's just, it's just crazy to me. The transfer portal is a little crazy to me. The NIL stuff is a little crazy. Um, that's what you work so hard for. That's why you put in all the blood, sweat, and tears and the extra work to get as good as you can so you can make it to the pro level and, and start getting paid there. So I don't necessarily agree personally with all that stuff, but it's part of the game now. I, I don't know if they can walk it back, but there has to be some type of limits and restrictions on it. Um, if not, it's just going to continue to be – Everyone transfers and everyone tries to get paid, which is crazy to no, me. And, and I'm with you, Christian, in terms of, you know, needing to have some sort of codification here to get some sort of guardrails, to get some sort of rules in place. It just seems like the adults did not see it coming or understand the power of what name, image, and likeness is. And, and and there needs to be some sort of uniformity, I think. But in terms of the players getting theirs, I have no problem with that. And when I hear coaches complain about it, like aren't aren't the coaches the ones who just get up and tell you, thanks for committing to the institution of higher learning that you're at, enjoy getting an education, I'm going to go take a higher-paying job somewhere else? Aren't they the ones that go and, and leave their own portal? You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's what I'm hearing when I hear some of that, Christian. Yeah, that ha- that happens for sure. But you have to realize that, in my opinion, the mm-hmm. only way good basketball happens is if people stay together for more than one year. <laughs> a-, a system has to be created. There has to be organization. I mean, when I think about how much better I was as a junior and senior at Duke under Coach K's system that I learned for two, three, four years, it's just incredible how much better I was and our whole team was under the same system for like an extended period of time. That's the only way really, really good basketball happens, in my opinion. If you just keep jumping around and moving around and changing coaches and changing players, to me, it's a little like playground basketball where you're just throwing stuff together for one year, seeing if it works. If it doesn't work, go somewhere else and see if you can make it all happen in a year. And to me, that's tough. So that's why I don't love it. Kirsten Leitner here on the Rich Eisen Show, courtesy of DraftKings. Do you have a a, a Final Four you want to let everyone know about? Have you chosen one? I, I did. I, I did my bracket today. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, okay. but I got you. I got UConn, mm-hmm. Houston, UNC, and Purdue making the Final Four. So you went all you went all top seeds, huh? You went all one seeds, Christian. Is that what it worked yes. out to be? <laughs> well, if it's UConn, North Carolina, Purdue, and um, and Houston, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. I mean, you know. Take the high percentage play in the earlier in the earlier rounds. I do have some upsets going on there, okay. but I last year I really liked Houston and they didn't make it. But I think Houston's going to be a little more upset, you know, compared to how they played last weekend. They got beat last weekend, mm-hmm. um, so I think you Houston's going to have a good run. As I already told you, I'm impressed with UConn. Purdue bailed out early last year, and Zach Eadie's a, a year older or a year better. So I did pick, you know, the all number one seeds. UNC, I just, I got to go with them. They have a lot of senior leadership. I think they're going to do well. So those are my four, and we'll see what happens. I'll be at the Final Four again this year, right. enjoying it working making appearances and and i'm taking my son again and i just love it that's awesome do you have uconn winning at all who'd you choose i picked houston winning it all okay and you think there is some value in getting thumped in your conference tournament to get you pissed like like is what you're saying there is some value yes because 
Yes, because it happened to me my junior year at Duke. We got thumped by 20 points uh, by Carolina my junior year, and then we won six in a row and won a championship my junior year. So I think there's some something about that. Okay. Last one for you here, Christian. Um, when you walked into the locker room for the first time as a member of the Dream Team, did you say anything? What 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 was that like for you? <laughs> Of course, I didn't say anything. I just uh, followed directions, and if they told me to pick up the towels, that's what I did, <laughs> and I kept to myself and tried to figure out my little space that I could uh, you know, not step on any toes. But what an experience, and there's so many pictures I've seen you know, in books and photo albums where I'm sitting next to Jordan talking to him, or he's teasing me about the Duke-Carolina rivalry, so... What memories, and I wish, man, I wish I could do it again. I bet. Did did they haze you? Did you get any hazing at all? I got a little hazing before the first practice. So I think we were together maybe like one dinner, one evening before the first practice. But after the first practice, once they realized that I wasn't going to complain. I wasn't going to cry. I, I could take an elbow to the chin. They all were great to me after that. So when, once they saw that I was, that I could handle them on the practice court and not complain and not cry and not act like a prima donna, they all treated me great. So that was your reputation, you think, walking in the room to them? Well, they're... You know, there is a preconceived notion where they're like, oh, here comes this dookie and, you know, he just won two championships and he better not act like a prima donna. And once they saw that I wasn't acting like that and I okay. knew my place, I, I realized that I was a rookie or a freshman and I was willing to get their donuts and their cigars and pick up their dirty laundry <laughs> after practice. They treated me just fine. Who, so who told you to pick up a towel? That's the, which one of them told you? Which one led that 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 charge, Christian? Every every one of them did, but uh, especially Barkley and Jordan. Jordan loved telling me what to do, you know, calling me a dookie. So they were all having fun with me at my expense, and I loved every second of it. I bet you did, Christian. I appreciate you joining. Um, I'd love to do it more than once a year. So look out for more of my calls. I appreciate whenever you uh, connect. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Rich. I'll see you next year in March. Okay. Sounds good, Christian <laughs> Leitner, everybody. Courtesy of DraftKings right here on the Rich Eisen Show. So we'll see you in a year. That's great. That's what he's going to do. That's what he's sticking to it. That's awesome. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free. 